When we come back, she's been called the first lady of cannabis and the Martha Stewart of marijuana. Cheryl Schumann has made a living selling one of the first designer brands of pot. Costs more than $700 an ounce and is wrapped in gold. She's going to join us live when we come back. Our next guest has been taking the marijuana industry by storm. So much so that a recent cover of Ad Week has her pegged as the first pot marketer. But the ambitious pot entrepreneur, entrepreneur isn't stopping there. She's taking us now behind the scenes of Beverly Hills Ultra High Life. Joining us now from L.A., Cheryl Schumann, or as she likes to be called, the Martha Stewart of marijuana. Good to see you, Cheryl. Great to see you. Thanks for having me on. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club, which you run, which seems to defy all of the stereotypes out there about stoners and potheads. Well, thank you so much. I mean, that's exactly our purpose. When um, I was first diagnosed with cancer, I was really feeling ashamed at, at, in the beginning about using cannabis as a cannabis consumer because of the negative image and stereotype. And when I spoke to a lot of my celebrity friends and high profile friends, we decided to have our own farm together. So we have 68 acres up north and think of it as a 420 friendly resort that we want to take on a national level. But, you know, the truth of the matter is there are a lot of celebrities and high, high profile people who who don't want to be assigned to that negative image. So as a branding and PR expert, I decided to rebrand the face of the modern cannabis consumer, make it is what we are today, which is a mixture of cannabis culture and celebrity culture. And if anyone has any doubt, there's no doubt in my mind that cannabis is now mainstream. Well, I mean, in California, it's just medical, just approved for medical use. Do you expect this to get on the 2016 ballot for recreational I, use? I absolutely expect California to lead the way for 2016. In fact, we consume more cannabis in L.A. County than any of the other states combined. And uh, California leading the nation in that fact will lead uh, an estimated $47 billion industry by 2016. And I'm very proud to announce that I manage a $100 million, $100 million hedge fund to invest in the cannabis sector, and I'm now doing a 15-city-wide uh, investment tour with Green Rush Financial Seminars, matching up uh, investors to cannabis entities. But how do you do, I mean, do you work with banks? Do you have a banking partner in your business, or is this all cash? Because as we understand it, it's been difficult since marijuana is still illegal at the federal level to get financing, to get help, and to get credit card use. Well, ironically, these are all private investors, angel investors, and what I like to refer to as burners, most of them in illegal states, and there are a lot of millionaires and billionaires out there that actually consume cannabis, that have the money, that want to finance things like the super PAC that we're working on because they strongly want to influence the political climate on legitimacy so that they don't have to worry about going to prison and losing their millions of dollars by being a cannabis consumer in an illegal state. So what we're working for with this super PAC and with this hedge fund and with the financial investors that I'm working with, we want to see cannabis legalized federally by 2016. And I'm very proud to say that I'm the woman that's leading the way and women are leading the way. So, so, um, so Cheryl, it, just explain this to me. Is it a one way bet? Is that what you're saying? Because there is a liability issue here. Medically, we don't know necessarily whether you could have a long term illness and be able to sue, presumably, and some sort of civil action against you as the leader of that investment. I mean, tobacco companies always worry about the roll of the dice case. Will you have to worry about the role of the dice case as well, potentially? Well, let me explain this to you. I'm a cancer survivor, so I don't worry about things. And uh, being at the front end of this and, and leading the way doesn't scare me at all. In fact, I'm very proud to lead. I'm a little bit of a gambler by nature. I took cancer head on, and I'm certainly willing to take this head on and lead the way. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to see uh, marijuana legalized by 2016, not just on a United States level, but on an international level. And, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, Cheryl, in, in terms of the price point here, I can understand from a marketing standpoint wanting to go to the high end. We talk about the high end of retail every day. But really, what are people getting for their money at these prices? Uh, unless it's just <coughs> incredibly potent, you must be taking people to the cleaners. <laughs> Well, actually, no, not at all. It all depends on how the cannabis is grown, the strains, the breakdown of the chemical compounds. For example, if you're purchasing cannabis in a state where it's grown outdoors, so you don't know for sure if it's clean, if it's
that's been tested, you're obviously going to get that at a lower price. Uh, when you're working with us at the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club, everything is organically grown. It's all tested. You know exactly what you're getting. We have the finest strains, and it's. I, I think the simplest comparison is is to the wine industry. You're always going to have your over-the-counter uh, bottles of wineries when we go um, recreational for recreational adult use, and then you're going to have your private venters or your private growers that grow uh, cannabis uh, or connoisseur quality cannabis. And what we do in our group, like for the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club, we just like a wine person, you would have a sommelier. We have cannabis experts where we do cannabis tastings and we pair the cannabis with the uh, fine dining as well. My vision is to see a private dining facility and a private vaping facility in every major uh, city in this country. Some say the Starbucks of pot, but um, I like to think of it as a fine dining experience and also with the 420 resorts. Imagine being yeah. able to go to a top of the line resort with the finest cannabis, the finest yoga, meditation, and have a real getaway retreat. Well, it certainly is one vision for the future, Cheryl. And I, and I heard you tell Katie Kirk that you can juice it, which I didn't even know, Cheryl Schumann. Thank you. We've got to leave it there. But good luck. The Martha Stewart of marijuana.